If Nick White gets his running game going, I think that's where Australia can cause them a lot of uh, trouble. Once again, we're back with another episode of In The Know, brought to you by Sporting News and GIO. Coming live from London, uh, former Waratahs and Wallabies coach Michael Checker. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about Scotland and obviously the huge match against England at Twickenham this weekend. So Monday morning, unfortunately, the Wallabies, their, their winning streak was snapped 15-13. Dave Rennie was actually quite optimistic. Uh, he liked their defence. He just said the team could never really get started. What was your takeaways from the game, Michael? Just the fact that it was the first time a lot of these players, or this team has really had to come over and experience the away game atmosphere. There has been a few games in New Zealand um, over the last couple of years. I think just that atmosphere, the, 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 the full house there, and you know the majority obviously of people against Australia, it's the first time. It's a good experience for them too to get in that, um, that pressure cooker. Uh, of the away, the, the European away crowd. And I, I feel like that did steal them a little bit, you know, in, in relation to getting their flow um, because it puts pressure on everyone, you know, the referee, the players, the, the lot playing away from home. But um, yeah, they'll be disappointed. I think that they didn't get a bit more uh, of the flow that they've had in previous weeks um, together on that game. The Wallabies do have a chance to start again this weekend against England. We haven't had great success. If you put aside that you know that glorious 2015 group stage win, which we all remember well, but Australia hasn't um, won on a spring tour since 2012 against England. Why do you think that is? Yeah, well, I've been a part of probably uh, four of those, I think, or three or four of those at least for the tours, I'm pretty sure. And the games have inevitably been tight and then... They've got away from us. You know, I remember a few of the games, and even um, for England at the World Cup of 2019, it was it was tight there for a period. Then we gave away an intercept try and a, and a, and a giveaway, a couple of scores, and it sort of got out quickly. And I think one of the key things against England is to, is to try to get that scoreboard pressure happening early, like get points, get in front. If I recall correctly, and I can't, can't be 100% sure, you know, I'm getting older, the memory's fading, but I think nearly in all of those games that we, where we did lose, uh, we went behind the score early, even if it's just a penalty goal or a couple of penalty goals here or there. And if I recall the World Cup fixture in 2015, we got on the board early and uh, and we, we had the lead from the, from the off. And I really think that Coach Rennie will be focusing on getting the fast start that they need points early on to try and apply some scoreboard pressure to England in front of their home crowd. Uh, in some team news, I uh, don't know if you saw, but Owen Farrell is now back after his false positive. Um, mm. Obviously, he missed the Tonga game, but uh, loose head Joe Marler is now out. How big of a, an out will that be for England? Yeah, I think of the the scrum battle is going to be really interesting. I, I see Australia's scrum as yeah, I, even though we had some struggles last week there, uh, I think that they were understandable considering uh, Jane Slipper had to cross over to the tight head for a bit of the game. Um, we had our tight heads struggling with injury throughout the game and it's become really quite a strong point. They won a crucial scrum penalty towards the end there that, that, that could have been considered as a turning point. I suppose Australia will be sweating on um, the Taniela Tupo situation as to whether he can be back. Just that extra set of depth in the in that tight head position. Uh, and it will be interesting to see whether Tolu Latu comes into the frame this week. You know, I was surprised to see him left on the bench, a player of such talent. Even though when McInerney came on, he, uh, he, he did well in the scrummaging. I'm interested to see if they do use Tolulatu as well. He's a big, big frame of a fella. So I really think it's going to be a critical part of the game. Former Broncos coach, now Wallabies defensive coach, Anthony Seabold. Uh, he singled out Nick White earlier this week. He said he was really the key for Australia. Obviously, he doesn't usually play the whole game because you've got Tate McDermott coming on. 
But he said if England can shut down Nick White, that is really the key for England to getting on top. Is that something you agree with? If Eddie's got Anthony talking about that already in his first couple of weeks, well, it's been it's done for a reason, without a doubt. You know, I don't think it'll fluster Nick White at all. He's been in been in excellent form, I think, um, for Australia. He's he's commanding the the base of the ruck well. I think Seabold has a point, and he's probably Eddie has a point as well. That if Nick White gets his running game going, I think that's where Australia can cause them a lot of uh, trouble um, because he's quite elusive. He can be a really elusive ball player. It's something that's probably come into his game a little bit more towards the back end of his career as opposed to the start. And that probably could have been some of the coaching he had early on, you know, asking him to do a lot more kicking than he, than he probably would be doing now. He's, he's probing a little bit more now. Now, is that the key to stopping Australia's attack? I don't think so. I think the Australian team is multi, more multifaceted than that. And I don't think Nick has been running as much as he, he, he probably could, you know, but that could be the way that they're looking to play or they're looking to keep something for, for further down the track um, around the running game. Fans in Australia who maybe haven't been watching England that much, can you give us an idea of where they are in their life cycle? Like, are they, are they building? Are they peaking? Are they in a rebuilding phase? Where is England currently at? He has got a plethora of talent, to be honest, to to work with. They're England, I feel like the English Premiership um, is raised its standard and it's delivering a much higher level player, more multi-skilled, uh, with more facets to their game, like players like Marcus Smith. And uh, I think... The way Exeter have played also has really contributed to the England team, even though um, I think they've made, they've changed and competed with teams like Saracens in a different way. So they've had to evolve their games and players have had to evolve as well. Um, and some players are being shifted out. Uh, you can see that. So I'd say that their last year was definitely rebuilding. This year is probably looking to put a few more blocks in place, still not looking for the finished product. And then next year, he'll want to have them, if I look back at some of his other World Cup cycles, next year, he'll want to have them starting to hum yep. as they lead into that, you know, the, the 2023 season. All right, that should be enough for us this week. Obviously, a massive week for Wallabies Rugby coming up Sunday morning. Michael Checker, as always, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.